In this video we're going to create an assembly of our gripper. Here in the Parts Studio I can see all of the parts that I've created and I need an assembly tab. If there's not one existing I can use the plus on the bottom left corner from the pop-up menu choose Create Assembly. In my assembly tab I'm going to use Insert and I can either insert all the parts by clicking on the Part Studio or any individual part. We'll click on the Part Studio to insert one set of all of the pieces. I'll click again in the assembly window and close the insert. Now these parts were all created together but they are not mated and so you can see in my assembly window they're free to move around. So the base is the part that I want to stay stationary so I know that part one is the base. I'm going to right click and choose fix. You see the little fix icon that shows that the base will not move around even though other parts will. I'm going to start by mating the actuator uh, shaft to the hole in the base. And I know that when the, uh, the gripper assembly is completely open, it's 50 millimeters from this front face to the face on the actuator. So I'm going to create a mate connector that represents that distance. I'll choose uh, mate connector. I'm going to go to this surface on the actuator and there's the, the where the shaft meets the actuator. I'm going to choose uh, that mate connector location but now I want to move it along the Z axis a total of 50 millimeters. So there I see where it's going to be and I'll accept that. Now I know that that point um, where that meets the shaft I'm going to create a slider mate. The first one is the point that will move so I'm going to choose that mate connector that I just created and the second one is going to be the fixed point so it'll be the beginning of the hole. So now those snap together. That's the zero position where the gripper will be completely open. Now I'm going to set some limits here and I want it to move between this zero position and as it slides in no more than 50 millimeters because then it would hit uh, the base. And I'm going to use my animate tool to look at the movement and make sure that's what I want. And that's correct. I'll accept that. Now if I grab a hold of this and try to move it, it will not move uh, outside of those limits. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that mate connector. Next we're going to mate the swing arm between the base and the gripper itself. To do this we'll use a revolute because I want this to be able to turn. We'll start with the base and choose uh, the hole and then on the swing arm I'm going to go and I want to see those three. If I hold down the shift I can uh, choose between those three positions and I want this bottom position. I'll click on that and I see that snaps into place. We'll accept that one. Now this is a revolute so it will the swing arm can move back and forth. And we'll now mate that to the gripper itself. I'll also use another revolute uh, on the gripper and the bottom uh, implied mate there and we will accept that. Now those are both should be able to revolve back and forth and move and it does. Now I need swing arms over here in this other position. And one of the tools that I can use is my replicate. So if I choose to replicate that swing arm and I want to put it over here on another place, you notice this turns pink. And it seems that I can't use replicate with two different surfaces that have mate connectors. Uh, I'm going to go to this last Revolute mate that I created and I'm going to suppress this. So now it's no longer connected there. So I just have one mate connector connected to the base and now we're going to try again. I'm going to get my 
uh, replicate and choose the swing arm and you notice that it chooses both the swing arm itself and the mate down here and then faces to, to match uh, if I click on this face I should it should find another hole to mate to and it does there so I can replicate that both the swing arm and the mate at the same time I'll do the same thing on this surface it found two instances two holes there that it could mate with. I'm going to accept that. Now, here was the Revolut mate that I suppressed. I'm going to unsuppress that. So now that's connected together again. But I will have to create individual uh, Revolut mates in between for these others. And I'll do the same thing on this other side. Oh, I have to have another gripper. Well, I'll go to insert uh, a gripper. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to open, just click on it, and I can see my uh, coordinate system icon here. If I click up here at the end of the arrow, I can rotate, and that little box opens up. I want to rotate this 180 degrees and click. And now we will use a Revolut Mate to mate these arms. So there's one. Let's see, I have this. I'm going to use another Revolut. Revolute. I want uh, that mate and that mate. We'll hit solve uh, to bring them back together. And now both sides are free to move with my Revolute. I'm going to go to isometric. Now I need another set of, of swing arms on the bottom. I could uh, insert those in again. Uh, using replicate but I'm going to use actually my assembly linear pattern and by doing this I can create another instance of these so the instances that I want to uh, pattern are these two swing arms and this will take the swing arms and it wants to know the direction that it's going to replicate these in I'm going to use the edge of the base here to show the direction. So we'll click here, and this line shows the direction. And I've cre rep basically created a pattern of the same parts there. Now the total distance between this top edge and the top edge of the swing arm is 30 millimeters and I can see that that puts the correct distance in that direction between them. If I can do that on this side, I guess I can do it on this other side too. I'm going to go back and choose these two instances and you notice that it also creates those down below. So we'll accept that and notice that over here that linear pattern comes up as uh, one item. But inside of it we have more instances of part three which is the swing arm. So now these all move together and these all move together. Next we're going to mate the control arm to the swing arm and actuator. This will be a Revolut mate and on the top surface of the actuator I'm going to go to this hole and choose the bottom of the hole on the control arm We'll accept that and that should swing around. Okay, and then the Revolute Mate on the top of this hole on that face and then on the bottom face of this hole. We'll hit solve, bring those together. So now if I grab the actuator and move it, I can see that the control arm will cause the gripper to move. Now we need another 
control arm on the other side, I know that I can't replicate that with um, two mates on two different uh, faces. So I'm going to suppress that last uh, Revolute mate and then use my replicate, choose the control arm and the mate itself, and then go back to this face and it finds another hole and replicates both the part and the mate. Then I'll come back to my uh, mate features and unsuppress uh, that and create a mate connector between this control arm and the swing arm. And now with those mated, if I move my actuator back and forth, I get both movements of the grippers. Now I need another set of these control arms on the bottom. We're going to use our uh, assembly linear pattern again. The instances here will be those two control arms. The direction will be this edge moving down below and the actuator is 39 millimeters. The, the thickness of the control arm is 9. Together that makes 48 millimeters uh, that I'm going to use as the distance so that puts it down at the bottom and I'll go ahead and accept that. Now moving the actuator back and forth I get the movement that I want. Now we haven't put any of the connecting pins in that would hold it together uh, but we have uh, assembled uh, our parts up to this point.